landscape there. Before that, I worked in Broomfield, Colorado for about five years at the Sun site. So just some clarification. I've seen the word virtualization a lot today, and meaning lots of different things. What I mean here is server virtualization, like, for example, Zen or VMware. And I'm going to talk about how um, VMware, or actually more, more, more generally, about how virtualization works in storage. Um, and I'm also going to talk more specifically about how fiber channel and virtualization can work together and some problems that come up with it. And then I'm going to talk about a solution. And I'm going to assume a lot of you already know this, so I'll go through it pretty quickly. I'm going to talk about what we do in Solaris. Um, we actually have several different virtualization environments. I'm going to talk about the problems that come up with fiber channel SANS and virtualization. And then the answer to that, which is endport ID virtualization. And then I'm going to talk about how we implemented this in Solaris, uh, the different pieces from the device driver up to the management stack, how we implemented it in Zen, and the two other virtualization environments we have in Solaris, which are logical domains and containers, which are sort of virtualization. So first of all, I want to talk about virtualization. And like a lot of things in computers, we think about virtualization as the latest new thing. Um, actually, this, this picture is about from the late 1960s. IBM did virtualization on some of their System 360 systems. What's, what's new and exciting, though, is you can do virtualization on a $1,000 laptop. You don't need a million-dollar computer now. But architecturally, a lot of the same techniques apply. So what do we mean by server virtualization? Um, server virtualization abstracts hardware. Um, and you can do this using pure hardware or a combination of software and hardware. You create multiple instances of a platform. And this, this is useful so you can run multiple operating systems, multiple instances of an operating system. And so by this, I mean um, uh, you can have a system, a physical server that's running Windows, running Solaris, running Linux, running FreeBSD, all at the same time. Um, and one server can run all of these concurrently. It's not a multiple boot system. It's, it's concurrent. And finally, this another related feature that we often find in, in virtualization is migration. And what this means is a guest operating system uh, can move from one host operating system, from one physical server, to another server. We'll talk more about this later. So I want to just give some basic terms, because I'm going to use these a lot throughout today's talk. Um, when I say guest operating system, I mean a, an operating system that's running on virtual hardware, um, not touching real hardware. So in Zen, we call this a DOM U. Um, in Solaris logical domains, we say this is an LDOM A, for example. Um, the host operating system, when I talk about a host operating system, this is the operating system that touches the hardware um, and supplies services to the guest. So any access to real hardware goes through this host operating system. Usually there's one of them in a virtual server. Uh, in Zen, we call this DOM0. In, in logical domains, we call it the service domain. So there's two major techniques uh, of doing virtualization today. One is called paravirtualization. Paravirtualization means that each operating system that runs on your virtual server uh, has special device drivers when it wants to request services. Uh, so an example of this service is a block device um, to, to access your disk. Um, your, your guest and host operating system kind of cooperate together, uh, and they have a special communication path. This is in contrast to full virtualization, um, when all the hardware is simulated um, by the host operating system and your guest operating system just runs. I'll talk a little bit more about this. So again, paravirtualization um, requires modification of the operating system. Um, so, so again, the example of a block device driver or a network device driver, 
you have a special device driver that just knows how to communicate uh, between the top, uh, between the guest and host operating system. Um, the advantage of this is it's it, it's.